Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the Pixel 8 Pro, some of my thoughts, and how it differs from the 7 Pro, which I also had done a review on. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel for a little while, you already know, uh, the way that I use my phone is generally photos, video, maps, messaging, YouTube, sometimes YouTube Studio for checking comments, Signal, DuckDuckGo, yeah, pretty basic stuff. Sometimes I'll pick something up on Amazon, uh, checking our wives notifications, and then controlling our motorhome and checking our solar system. So my requirements are not necessarily all media based, but everything that I do is done a little bit better on this phone. Now, while the 7 Pro was a pretty good phone, this is a great phone. I'm gonna tell you why. Typically, I run Graphene OS. Now, once Graphene OS is released, I will be installing it on this device and showing you guys how. But running the stock ROM, for some reason it could just be Android 14, but it seems a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit snappier. It's better at what it already does. This guy does start at $999. Typically, I've noticed that the best prices to buy these are pre-order, where Best Buy gave me $600 for my 7 Pro, plus a free watch, uh, <laughs> which I'll probably sell more than likely. And that's not a terrible deal in my opinion, but if you've already missed that, of course, wait until Black Friday. Black Friday seems to be a really good time to buy these. Of course, all of the apps are snappy. It's got the Tensor G3 chip. All that means is it's a really secure chip and it's fantastic. So I believe it has 12 gigabytes of RAM on this model. I ordered the 256 gigabyte storage because it's so much easier than with iOS to drag and drop your files. Uh, USB-C, Apple's kind of new to that game apparently. Welcome iPhone users. Everything is just super snappy on this device. Um, it's one of those things that you have to kind of see to believe and it does have a one to 120 hertz refresh rate on the display. It's also an OLED panel. The OLED panel is really bright. So all in all, it kind of just feels like you're interacting with the phone a little bit better. You know, it's not too dim, the colors aren't too off. It doesn't feel unrealistic, if that makes sense. And it saves a little bit of power when it can drop down to that one hertz, it only refreshes once per second. Uh, it's kind of a nice thing. OLED means that it only illuminates what needs to be illuminated. So blacks are actually black on this device, which is really nice. And my favorite feature still, when you're coming from the iOS world, is no stupid notch. And I have a screen protector, so it does pronounce this a little bit more, but you can see that little tiny cutout it virtually goes away uh, when I'm watching movies and, and uh, shows, which I should say, not only is the display good, but the audio is just fantastic. Genuinely impressive stuff. Um, uh, comparing to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is what Emma has, this is really, really good. Um, nice and loud. It's kind of hard to show you something that's not already copywritten, right? But I, it's, it's hard to explain, but these little tiny changes really add up. When we're watching a movie and there's some light bouncing around the room, I don't have to worry about a curved display blocking some of the image or distorting some of it because it's not a stupid curved glass. Thankfully, they've gone with a flat panel and this is exactly how it should be. They also, however, kind of curved the, uh, the edges just a little bit so the glass on the back is curved and the aluminum on the sides is curved, which is really, really nice. There's nothing at all to complain about. And, uh, some folks might say that notch, that little camera hump there is stupid, but honestly, it gives me somewhere to put my finger when I'm holding the phone. And when it's on a desk, it doesn't rock, which is really nice. Uh, and honestly, I've gotten used to it. Like you genuinely get used to it within minutes of holding the device. It also stands out from the rest of the competition, right? All in all, you guys know that the software is good. Of course, the hardware is fantastic. It's designed by Google. It has enough RAM. The chip is secure enough. It does now have facial detection, which is something I don't use, but from what I've seen from other folks, it's plenty fast. And I gotta say, the fingerprint scanner, super spot on, very fast, every single time. Then again, while some folks may have had complaints about the 7 Pro, I didn't. I'm also using a screen protector and it still works beautifully. Battery life has been pretty dang good. Um, I'll use it all day. So if I were to take it off the charger at say six in the morning, I can use it until about eight before it has about 10% left and then I wanna plug it in. But I am watching videos on it, uh, messaging, maps, music while I'm out, things like that. So um, it's not, I'm also one of those people that has their, their display up super bright and 
Eh, not a big deal. Voice recognition, of course, is very good. Um, the microphones that are on here are very good, so it clearly understands you. Other people can hear me very well. But the thing is, I don't really care about a lot of the AI features. What I do care about, though, is that camera. So, photos are fantastic. From any app or while locked, if you double tap the lock button, the power button, it'll take you right in here to the camera app. And of course you have 0.5, which is fantastic. One, two, which I believe is a crop version of the, uh, the same sensor and 5X zooms. The 5X zoom, I believe is now a 48 megapixel sensor I love that. And the zoom is fantastic. It's super sharp. The colors are always a hit. Like I'm never, I mean, unless you're comparing directly to something that you prefer the look of, they're always just fantastic. They're really good. They were also pretty dang good in the 7 Pro, but if you really zoom in, of course, you're going to see it fall apart here. It's not quite as bad. It's just a little bit better, but the 7 Pro's video was absolutely horrible. I actually shot an entire video using the 7 gift ideas for RVers and yeah it was pretty bad granted we're in Washington I'm using it all throughout the day inside of a vehicle in a store outside it just couldn't really keep up the audio was also pretty bad this guy video wise it's definitely a lot sharper and it's definitely an improvement Google also claims that they're going to send out a lot more updates and things like that that will help especially AI generated stuff I don't care about any of it I want to know what's in here right now and so you do have a lot of options here, of course, but what matters most to me is how it handles the light. And something that you notice with the iPhones is that generally it kind of bops around a lot. This sort of does the same. Let me show you. So this is the 0.5X zoom. This is one, two, which should be a crop version, and five, which is pretty good. There's a little bit of jarring there, of course, as it switches camera lenses, but that's absolutely to be expected. And a little bit smoother than you get through uh, <laughs> swapping lenses on a big camera. Stabilization, as you can see, is pretty dang solid overall. Really solid. And here, it doesn't seem to bop around so much with the tone mapping. It's not kind of going up and down. You see a little bit of it sort of flickery, but the interesting thing is it seems so much worse, at least in my opinion, when it's trying to tone map for your face. Uh, Google tries to make faces flattering. I appreciate it. It's all software, right? But here it doesn't seem to do a very good job. If I turn, the scene changes, and it's up and down and up and down from what I've noticed, at least in uh, previous tests. But then again, it handles this scene very, very well. And I can zoom in. Leaves and such. Very sharp. And then, of course, we can go all the way out to 20x zoom. And even here, so if I want to show these trees, I think that the color, the exposure looks fantastic. And this is without 10-bit HDR. Really not bad. Someone's flying a plane out here. And we can see that plane right there. Oh, lost me. So I originally started this channel with an iPhone 12 Pro and it was a pretty dang good camera. Of course, color balance gets a little wonky at times. Um, the exposure, especially if HDR is on, it's it's pretty bad. But, you know, it was good enough. It's, it's a really good camera for, you know, a pocket camera. I believe that with the 7, I probably would not have wanted to start the channel. With this, I'd probably want to lock in some settings, but I think that I would be very happy with this overall. It's actually really good, and the audio, nothing to complain about at all with the seven it was a little bit it's a little less clear no real complaints on that front but this is just great continuing with the one x camera you know i think that what really blows me away is um, obviously night mode so they use a lot of computational photography things that it would take you a good amount of time in photoshop and, and other programs um, to put together hdr obviously on the fly takes a lot of processing power they do a great job here. The low light performance of the sensor is actually surprisingly good, even in uh, really dark conditions, uh, even without using night mode. So I've been pretty dang impressed and it gathers a lot of details. And again, no real issues with the 7 Pro's photos, but these, 
have a little less green hue to them. Could just be the way that it is uh, tuned software wise. Um, but yeah, no complaints really either way. This is just better. So this is a big reason that people upgrade their phones is for the camera. I think you'd like it. So here's a really good example of how much detail you can get. <laughs> okay, thank you. Even in video, okay, thank you. Yes, gracias. Uh, <laughs> even in video, it is really, really good. And you can see all the textures of his fur, just really solid. Now, if I move this back here, you can see it's really dark. It's hard to it's, you know, it's hard to express here, uh, but we've got a lot of sun coming in here, and it's really dark back there. But look at the low light performance. I think it's just so surprising <laughs> more than anything. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's I think that's the most. Uh, I think that's the best part of this, especially because sometimes I don't bring, you know, my GoPro or uh, a bigger camera. Really, buddy? <laughs> really? Are you just hamming it up? <laughs> yeah, but no complaints here on my uh, on my end. I will say being able to zoom in on something real quick is a, a real nice treat. And uh, this is no slouch. Now, I'm not typically so bold. I would much rather use a dedicated device for it. But if you want to do underwater photography and videography, you want to take a nice dunk in the pool, it is IP68 water resistant, and you can do, I think it's 240 frames per second at 1080p on this device, which is a pretty, I mean, that's pretty fair. Uh, decent quality. You're going to be able to slow it down. Um, I, there's not a feature that I had used on any other platform, any other device that this doesn't have. That's a nice thing to say. I don't feel like I'm missing a single thing anymore over the iPhone. You know, it used to be that the iPhone just had, in my opinion, better photos, more consistent photos, and much better video. And here, it's good enough for video, and it's great for photos. Would I recommend it? Absolutely, all day long, pick it up. It's gonna be the, way, the one for you. Now, if you're coming from a 7 Pro and you like the curved display, I wouldn't worry about upgrading. If you're coming from a seven and you're looking for the eight, probably wouldn't upgrade either myself. If however, you're coming from say a five, probably worth the upgrade. The six, it, depending on uh, how your phone's doing and if you're happy with it. One thing to look for really is trade-in value if you're not somebody who wants to sell privately um, or if you can't repurpose that device for something else. Also, I would probably wait until Black Friday. It's not gonna be too far out if you wanna save a little bit more money. I noticed last year they were very much on sale. So a couple hundred bucks off uh, might save you maybe 200, $250. So I hope this is helpful. Would recommend. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.